Yes, me. Now we can hear you. Uh, today we have with us. Uh, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you all for joining um, joining the call. Uh, today we have with us Aditya Sriram, the founder of Fitwit. He's also a serial entrepreneur, and uh, along with him we have Deepika Vasudevan, who is a nutritionist. They are here to walk us through Fitwit, a unique uh, custom-centric fit fitness company that focuses solely on providing a healthy lifestyle to its customers. The team of nutritionists guide us and create a professionalized meal plan. The meal plan created is in turn followed by professional cooks who ensure you eat healthy. They, you eat homemade healthy food according to your diet plan. So um, we have Aditya. Um, Hello. Yes, Aditya, we can hear you. Hi, so uh, are we good to go? Yes. Great. Okay. Hi, guys. Thank you all for joining. And uh, basically what I wanted to do was uh, take you through uh, sort of like a small uh, presentation that I've made for you guys, which is very specific to the situation that we're all in right now. We're all in our homes and we're all kind of locked down. And uh, we can't really get out for much right now. So uh, that doesn't mean that we should uh, not focus on eating right and not focus on exercising. We should be able to do all of these things within the confines of our home at homes as well. So what I'm going to do is uh, the initial bit is to give you an understanding about what nutrition is and uh, how we can uh, sort of follow nutrition for ourselves. Then I go into why exercise is important. Post which I'll tell you how to figure out uh, nutrition and exercise for yourself. So ideally, I mean, post this webinar, you shouldn't really need any uh, anyone selling you a diet plan or anyone selling you a workout plan. You should be able to figure this out on your own. But at the end of the day, we're still here to help you. So uh, I think we'll be first in line to sell you a diet plan or a workout plan ourselves. But uh, yeah. So I think the initial bit is just going to be taken over by Deepika here. And uh, Deepika is uh, a senior nutritionist uh, who's working with Fitbit. And she'll be able to sort of give you an insight into what nutrition is. Right, Deepika? I'll yep. uh, control the slides because they're on my laptop. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, I'll start to. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so, hi, I'm Deepika Yo. So, I have completed my master's in uh, food science and nutrition. And uh, let me do a little bit basics first. So, what is nutrition? So, it's about nutrients. So, whether you eat a donut or whether you eat a carrot, everything has nutrients. So, what are these nutrients going to come and do inside your body? how it's going to interact in your body, whether the donut is going to cause a health issue or whether the carrot is going to uplift your health. It's all about the nutrients. So nutrition is nothing but an interaction of these nutrients in your body, whether it can uplift your health or whether it can improve your health, whether it can improve your metabolism or downgrade your health. So um, many of us try to, you know, lose weight or lose those extra pounds of fat so we try to do few kind of diets so but however we are not able to stick to these diets for a long period of time because uh, we might be on a very low carb diet so it's giving us more cravings it's making us feel little unsatisfied so we don't tend to stick to a diet for a long period of time or also what happens is um, we end up, uh, no, it's the diet plans might be a little bit complicated, so we are not able to follow to the T, so we lose motivation. So, when it comes to um, whether you want to do weight loss or muscle gain, I would say a good, well balanced diet would help you to achieve your goals and without getting into the diet phase. So, a well balanced plan. Um, once you start following and make it a habit, it's a lifelong continuation. But however, a diet plan would be a 
very small uh, period of time. It's a short term goal. So you might stick to a diet plan for a week or maximum you would do for 12 weeks. And then once you're out of a plan, you tend up, you end up eating more junk and uh, you go back to the same phase where you started. So when it comes to nutrients, we classify into two major. One is macro and one is micro. Before that, uh, like what is calories we would uh, discuss upon. So calories is nothing but energy. So any food what you consume gives us energy. So calories is nothing but the form of energy. It could be uh, told as kilocalories or kilojoules. It's usually a little, you know, connected to positive term. Calories is equal to energy. But however, for most of us, when we hear the word calories, something we uh, feel a little negative about it. Why? Because high amount of energy, that high amount of calories in our body could definitely deteriorate our health and lead to more weight gain. So when we say calories, so what are the nutrients that is giving us calories? So it would be your macros that gives us calories. So it could be your carbs, protein, fat. So when we say carbs, it's about all the carbohydrates, whether it's your simple sugars or like in form of sugar or donuts or whether it's your whole brown rice or oats or barley or any millets, everything is considered carbs. So when we say uh, you need to cut back on carbs, it's not about cutting back on whole grains, it's cutting back only on simple sugars. So coming to protein, uh, what's the main benefit of protein? So a gram of protein is giving us around four kilocalories. So when we say protein, the first thing we remember is building muscles, right? Building tissues, but however, at this point of time, I would emphasize if your diet is lacking protein, definitely your immunity is at risk. So whether you have turmeric and ginger every day to boost your immunity, if your diet lacks protein, definitely the whole body or your immune system cannot do its work. So, and coming to your fats, that is going to give you around more calories compared to your carbs or protein. Usually, carbs and protein gives you 4 kilocalories for 1 gram, whereas your fat gives you 9 kilocalories for 1 gram. So that's reason when you eat just a handful of nuts or peanuts, it's going to give as much as kilocalories as a meal does. So let's get back to the same macronutrients and its role. So when we think about weight loss, we always say, cut back on sugars, cut back on carbs. Why? Because when you cut back on sugars, simple sugars, and include more whole grain, it not just suppresses your appetite and uh, improves your appetite, but also what happens is your insulin level comes down a little bit. So when this happens, your overall health is taken care because your kidney uh, will be able to excrete more amount of toxins and sodium and also you tend up end up losing more water which is unnecessary in your body so you tend to lose weight more drastically when you cut back on sugars and simple carbs but also your gut health improves very much so when we say what are the right carbs you're supposed to be taking it would be your whole grains whether it's your brown rice or unpolished rice or red rice or whether it's your oats or millets whole grain uh, wheat so you can make some multigrain full carbs or whole wheat uh, chapatis so that will be your major carbs and then uh, most of the vegetables and fruits also gives you carbs so you there's no restriction of what vegetables or fruits you take you can take all the almost all the vegetables and fruits usually we tend to avoid potatoes because it's going to give us too much of simple carbs coming to protein so when we say protein uh, now there's a lot of issues happening so most of us are not really taking um, any animal protein and especially one is that we have fear of taking animal protein and also availability is a problem so in that case what we can always do is we can choose some simple plant proteins like your pulses your legumes uh, whether it could be your rajma or lobia or black beans or your uh, 
chana, kabul chana, and your simple dal will be able to give you a good amount of protein. With that, you can just have a cup of curd. And uh, if you're able to get animal protein and if you choose to do that, it's good. And uh, also having a, a cup of milk and uh, you can also include soya in your diet. So that's one of the major plant protein that gives you all the essential amino acids and it's called the complete protein. Coming to a uh, fat, so we do not usually restrict the fat absolutely. We do need some amount of fat. If you're not having too much of fat in your diet, if it is too less also, your vitamin A, D, E, and K will not be absorbed. So you might have deficiencies of these vitamins if your fat levels are pretty low. And also when we say what is the good uh, right amount of fat you can take, it would be two tablespoons of cooking oil in a day is absolutely fine and safer along with it you can have a um, a fistful of nuts and also other good fats would be coming from your pumpkin seeds black seeds avocados and uh, your nuts so next when we talk about micronutrients usually we will be focusing on vitamins and minerals so if your diet is lacking vitamins or minerals that is the major reason why you are having lethargy and if your metabolism is low that could be the main reason because these vitamins and minerals are the major reason for you to boost your metabolism and also these have the main role of protecting your immunity safeguarding your overall health and also if you feel you're looking quite aged compared to your age it's probably because you're not having enough of vitamins and minerals in your body and um, so when we um, you know focus on the um, calories we tend to uh, only see what are the calorie less foods what are the calorie rich foods but you will have to make sure we are taking a good well balanced diet so that you know instinctively we stick to our portion size so when we say a well balanced diet uh, um, aditya could you show one of the men a sample So here's one of the sample. Uh, for breakfast, we generally focus on some carbs and protein. So the carbs is coming from chapatis and lobias, uh, black-eyed beans, which is pretty high in protein, one of the richest protein sources in animal protein. And uh, when we say lunch and dinner, we are approximately having a you know, a rice, which is giving us carbs, and yellow dal and curd is giving us protein, and curd also gives us vitamin D and calcium. And uh, there is vegetables, which is giving us uh, fiber as well as new uh, vitamins and minerals. So we can either have sprouts, even that can be a good substitute for vegetable. If at this point of time, when there's a lot of communities which is having restrictions of shopping, and uh, many are complaining now that we are not able to get so much of fruits or vegetables. So this is one of those uh, times. Or else you can just have a cup of uh, sabzi also. And coming to snacks, you have an option whether you can take fruit or you can take um, milk with almonds. So this is uh, a very just to sort of add in here. Uh, sorry to cut you off, but yeah, uh, you can always add, uh, you know, with the boiled uh, chickpeas and uh, sprout salad, you can always add uh, cucumbers, tomatoes, onions, carrots, whatever you like to sort of mix uh, mix up the whole uh, bowl of uh, salad for yourself. And uh, with the snacks, you can, so the, the calories that are counted for this include uh, the bowl of fruits, 500 milliliters of skim milk, and the five almonds. So uh, the, the idea is whatever items that are uh, shown on this is uh, available for consumption and this is basically just a very very simple plan that uh, we thought we'd come up with for, uh, uh, for, for, for us here because uh, a lot of us are stuck and we don't have uh, uh, a good supply of a lot of different groceries as Devika was saying uh, availability of a lot of different types of protein is 
uh, a little difficult right now. So, which is why we sort of created a small plan which you can probably stick to, and uh, it totals up to a thousand five hundred calorie range. And uh, for a lot of you who are looking to lose weight, I can also even show you how to sort of calculate what calories you need to be uh, aiming for. Uh, I think I'll go back to that later once this guy is finished. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So why even bother? Because we will be pretty conscious during the daytime. We try to restrict um, ourselves and eat some good, well-balanced diet. Or most of them end up eating only sprouts, one bowl, and having some fruits and again some sprouts and vegetables. So, so much of restriction. What does it actually do is by dinner time you're so tired because you're not getting enough of nutrients to keep your energy throughout. So when you lack your carbs or when you lack any of your nutrients or uh, when you're not giving enough of energy to the body, what happens is you end up craving for a lot of junk. You end up craving for sweet, whatever you love, you start craving for it and you end up eating a lot by the evening or dinner time. So it's much better that you do not restrict yourself throughout the day or rather it's like if you crave for some sweet do a good simple swap and have some fruits or nuts or some uh, dates so that you do not restrict your body completely and end up eating way lot more by the end of the day and uh, so that's what uh, there are pros and cons in dieting so when we say a good well balanced diet it does not have so many restrictions as much as a diet plan does so in that way you do have a cheat meal once a week so you indulge in it you enjoy it you feel satisfied and also you get back to the same good nutrition well balanced meal so you enjoy and you don't feel your craving or restricted when, uh, so bottom line, when I say what are the things we'll have to follow, eat a very good high protein breakfast. So if you're an vegetarian, definitely having around uh, two to three whole eggs with some um, veggies and some toast or some chapati is really good. Or if you're a pure vegetarian, then you can end up having some sprouts raita with a little bit of poha. So when you start your day with a good high protein breakfast your cravings for junk food comes quite low and also your appetite is pretty good so you feel satisfied and you are getting a good amount of energy to work throughout the day then the next thing is avoid sugary drink even avoid pure fruit juices rather eat a fruit so that improves your digestive system your gut health and also you become a little more mindful because when you sip on smoothies or juices it is good once in a while but not every day so many think uh, dieting should be full of fruit juices and juices they go get a juicer and uh, they remove all the fiber and just sip on the nutrients that is really not going to benefit and you're supposed to be a little more mindful when you're eating. Chew as much as possible, then eat. So then what happens is your hormones, which is your ghrelin, which shows the, how hungry you are, and leptin, which tells that you're pretty full and it's time to stop. These hormones will sleep if you're not mindful, if you're watching a TV or if you're checking your phone or if you're thinking something else, like you're eating and you're thinking what work to do next so that time you don't really uh, be able to see how much hungry you are and you end up overeating so be a little mindful give that 20 minutes to yourself and focus on what you're eating then try to sip water between the meal because it is important so if you hydrate between the meals you also suppress your appetite and also what happens is your nutrients are absorbed much better because if you're just eating food without water, what happens is there's a too much of, um, um, you know, uh, nutrients will not be able to absorb because you're, uh, you're concentrating the nutrients in your intestine. And then choose a little bit of weight loss friendly foods. That would be a lot of vegetables and fruits in place of having some puppets and pickles. So... 
and also drinking coffee or tea between the meals is not a good option if you really crave for having coffee or tea restrict one coffee or tea in a day at a preferred time not between the meals or with the meals and also make sure your whole diet has a good whole foods as a base so your whole foods would be the whole grains which we were talking about previously your pulses and your fruit veggies then um, apart from that if you have any uh, question and answers we'll take it at the end of the session but uh, just make sure you're hydrating well and sleeping well also if you're not sleeping well definitely whatever workout you do whatever diet you do it's not going to work out because you're giving a havoc to your system your entire uh, system will be dewired if you do not take care of your hormones and your hormones need sleep it needs rest and it needs to relax so sleeping um it's really important seven to eight hours of sleep is important and good hydration is also needed so let's take the question answer session at the end um aditya you can uh, take over thank you so much dipika um okay guys uh, i think uh, i'm gonna move into a little bit of sort of explaining to you why exercise is important and why we all should be exercising uh in this period of lockdown that we're all facing right so these are just the just a few of the reasons why exercise will improve your health it uh, improves your uh, it improves your uh, mental health firstly so if you're all stuck in a situation where you're all stuck at home and you're all stuck with uh, uh family and uh, you know not not the happiest person at home the best thing you can probably do is find a spot and just exercise because it uh, releases some hormones that make you really happy and uh, it boosts your metabolism and uh, you are able to sort of uh, uh, you know the, the eat better and while your nutrition is also uh, being taken care of your exercise is also important so that uh, you know you are able to sort of uh, react better to that nutrition your body starts adding muscle your body starts burning fat cells in your body and uh, overall it's just a great addition to have to keep yourself moving and keep yourself active uh, during this period um obviously we can't expect amazing results over the uh, coming say one or two weeks that were obviously in a lockdown where you can see a before and after over here this is definitely not going to happen but what you can do is at least start the journey to go from you know the before and the after looking like uh, someone like ronaldo right so the idea is to just get in the mindset and start the journey right now so that once everything is much better you're able to sort of focus on this uh, a lot more and make it a part of your daily lifestyle and your habits are uh, all leading towards you uh, having sort of like a, a dream body so to say uh let's get into the mathematics of it because a lot of lot of what fitness and health and fitness is uh, is about a few basic numbers that i can just crunch for you over here let's start with uh, your total daily energy expenditure now your tdee as it's called is basically how many calories you're burning in a day so like for example i use this uh, completely free tool on the internet called tdee calculator.net and uh, I, i don't think you need to write it down what i can do is towards the end put all of this in a chat so you can just click on these links um you can go on to this and you can put in your basic details your gender your age your weight your height and your activity level at this point i would suggest putting your activity level as a sedentary or like an office goer basically so that you get a very real figure of what your maintenance calories are now your maintenance calories this figure that says 2790 calories per day basically means this is how many calories you need to be consuming on a daily basis in order to neither gain weight nor lose weight so this is that perfect figure which if you continue eating say 2790 calories there is going to be no change in your weight right now uh, if you'd like to uh, sort of work on something that's uh, a weight loss for yourself or what what we call a, a beach body for the summer uh, our suggestion is to go no more than 500 calories less than your 790 calories per day 
that means if your maintenance calorie is at 2790 cut 500 from that and aim for 2290 calorie and you need to limit your eating at 2290 calorie now these are just figures that are very specific to say me because i put in my details over here these are figures that i should be eating now this number varies from person to person now uh, you may have somewhere around 2000 calories as your maintenance calories and that's okay because that's how that's what your body needs now this calculation is something that you will have to make for yourself now for your ideal beach body i would suggest going no more than 500 calories less than your 2790 maintenance calories and if you want to be putting on weight and you're really skinny and you want to say okay i want to put on muscle you need to combine a good calorie intake of your maintenance plus a maximum of 500 calories which is about 3290 calories per day and at this rate ideally you should be gaining or losing around 2 kg a month uh, this is the simple calculation behind uh, what goes into the creation of diet plans um, right so uh to track your calorie intake it's a little difficult i'm not going to lie because you have to constantly enter in what you've been eating but luckily for us there are a couple of tools that help us uh, uh really do this uh, quickly one is my fitness pal and the other is healthify me uh, now for uh, a lot of you who may be familiar with these apps Uh, it, it's a little difficult. I'm, I I understand for you to keep entering your uh, calorie intake, but here's a trick that I use. I use a trick where you know um, I take an average of roughly what I eat during a day because it for me it doesn't vary so much that I eat something uh, completely different on Monday and then something completely different on Tuesday. I have a sort of a similar eating pattern. So what I do is on Monday I log in on my phone and I. try to find out how many calories i'm eating and i just stick to the same pattern on every other day so that it becomes easier for me to sort of uh, uh, get an understanding of how many calories i'm eating or uh, if you are eating completely different meals it's completely okay what you can do is log in to your meals on the apps and they will tell you how many calories you are eating and not just that they will also tell you uh, how much of protein you are eating or how much of carbohydrates you are eating on a daily basis so it's it's very easy for you to track and understand what's happening in your daily diet right so as dipika had already mentioned about this sort of sample plan this is something that i created for a lot of our uh, for the community that we run uh, to basically just help them stick to one sort of a plan right now and a lot of people who come to us saying okay we want to uh, we want to have a, a we want to do a fat loss right now because we have a little bit more time to sort of exercise a little bit more time to cook for ourselves and things like that so we also understood that there's a there's a problem with the groceries and the supply of the groceries which is why we sort of stuck to a very very basic grocery list which i'm sure is available uh, in a grocery store near you and all this this particular plan will need is atta it will need rice it will need Uh, black eyed peas it will need uh, dal it will need a little bit of curd chickpeas and sprouts and any assortment of sort of fruits and vegetables that you like and we wanted to sort of uh, create a small plan where you can probably stick to this in a time like this and instead of you know uh, this would probably just help you uh, avoid eating packaged and processed food things like maggi and uh, things like all the Uh, masala mas and stuff like that that you get packaged in a container rather than that i would highly suggest you eat uh, a real food raw, like you know real uh, natural food uh, compared to uh, anything like a packet of maggi and this is basically just so that we are able to uh, stick to a sort of uh, calorie intake of around 1500 calories um now i i'm going to be putting out three different uh, uh calorie buckets one with 1500 calories one with 2000 calories and one with 1500 calories and what i do i i would do is suggest you to go back to the td calculator which is uh, this and find out how many calories you need to be eating and understand what your goal is and based on that choose the plan that i give you and go ahead with that
all right now it's really important for us to sort of uh, work out and uh, even even though we are in a confined space we're in our home i'm sure you'll have a little bit of space for you to move around and uh, i would really suggest uh, finding a home workout regimen for yourself and i'm sure uh, you may be any level between beginner and intermediate to even a professional and uh, if you are based on that i would urge you to sort of design a plan for yourself where you you could be doing any sort of exercise that you prefer at home and at the moment any exercise is better than no exercise because uh, you, your body really needs to be active and keep moving and uh, make sure that you know you don't feel lethargic because a lot of us are right now working from home and lethargy is a really easy thing to feel because you're just sitting in front of your computer all day and the bed is right there so it's very easy for you to get up and just walk to your bed and go to sleep rather i would suggest you keep yourself active and keep yourself moving on a daily basis and uh, you don't necessarily have to be doing what these guys are doing these guys are uh, pretty much well built professionals but there is always a start you can always start trying to do what these guys are doing like say for example you can work on a regimen which includes something like push ups which is a very very basic exercise and i'm sure any gym that you probably were a part of or you walk into the first thing you will probably see people doing is push ups everyone's just doing push ups and it's it's really it's a really important exercise that engages a, a lot of muscles in your body and sort of keeps you uh, keeps you really uh, fit and muscular uh, at least in your upper body and it's something that i i feel like you should include and if you cannot able to do it there are variations of push ups where you can start off easy where you can do it on an incline where you can sort of uh, maybe against a table that you have you can just put your hands up against that table and try to lift yourself off off of it it's uh, something as simple as that um but yeah uh, i mean if you don't even have dumbbells it's it's very easy to like make your own dumbbell and you can use like a bag that lying around maybe a gucci bag if you like really need really it and some useless books that you don't ever read stuff these books into the bag and it acts like a dumbbell now i've got something of my own that i put a bag of books and i use this bag daily basis as my dumbbell and i suggest you guys can do it too and there are a lot of workouts and there are a lot of uh, youtube videos there's a lot of instagram influencers who are putting a lot of these uh, videos out for you to be able to exercise uh, with uh, uh, even in this situation and i suggest you have a look at them and if you don't really want to look too far we are doing it too and we've got a community that we're doing this for and i'll introduce that to you as well and uh, this is a good time for you to really uh, pick up healthy habits and start being uh, start living a healthier lifestyle and these are small changes that you can learn to make right now that you will uh, that sort of becomes a habit and then once you're back uh, on the outside uh, you're able to sort of keep these habits and these healthy habits with you um, while you're uh, in, in your daily lifestyle as well so i think the final message from my end would be uh, start influencing your family start influencing the people you know and you love to uh, start building a healthier lifestyle so be like christian right so thank you so much guys that's about it from my end and uh, as i was saying we do put out a lot of these uh, we do put out these small recipes and we do we put out these uh, uh, home workout tips in our telegram community and uh, if you guys are uh, Uh, on telegram or or if you're not on telegram also please download telegram and search for us at t.me/fitwit and you'll uh, you can it's an open group for all of you all to join and you can join us and uh, probably share your fitness journey there as well with us all right thank you guys uh, i urge you all to make a healthier choice every day here's uh, here's our contact details and you can get in touch with us for anything and i think uh, uh megna if you're there i think you can sort of direct the questions to yes. us yes yes we actually uh, people have actually started um, shooting questions to aditya uh, great uh, so we have one of the uh, uh, people asking what nutrition advice would you give for uh, someone who may, may have contracted uh, covid-19 and is self isolating as a result
Uh, Deepika, I think you're on mute. You're on mute, Deepika. Okay. Now? Yes, we can hear you well. Yeah. So, uh, we do not have cure for it yet, but uh, you will have to still work on building your immunity at this point of time. So, having a good well-balanced meal, as I told, you will have to work on your protein levels. So, you will have to, like, if your uh, uh, body weight is around 80 kgs, you will have to make sure your protein is at least 1 gram per kg body weight, that is 80 grams of protein. But to build immunity, it would be better to stick to 100 grams of protein for a day. Only then you will be able to give the 100% um, impact to your body. Along with that, you will have to have a lot of fruit, fresh fruits and vegetables so that every nutrient like your vitamin A, your vitamin E, your zinc, antioxidants has the direct impact to fight uh, the virus as much as possible. So. In that case, you will have to, uh, you know, try to include two to three fruits in a day, which is really washed. And also your fruits and vegetables must be a little bit steamed as well, because at this point of time, there's a high chance even a bacteria can come and impact your health more if you are already contacted with um, COVID-19. Well, that so, was, uh, sorry, go ahead. Yes. Well, that was the next question, um, Deepika. Uh, somebody actually wants to find out when we talk about washing vegetables, um, you know, we, if, if we don't know who's got what out there and yes. we have for vegetable vendors, um, they, they, know, they take very basic precaution that they just come, they just have a mask on. Um, we don't know how, how many uses it's already gone through. Right. So what, what is a methodology that you would, um, you know, uh, suggest or advise um, apart from the regular cleanings do you have any intense cleaning advice for vegetables and uh, greens uh, so what happens is covid um, so this is an oil base so even in a thin layer of oil can still protect you from the virus so what you do is uh, before getting the vegetables we'll have to uh, put your baking soda not your baking powder or your cooking soda it's the baking soda that has to go in the hot water okay so that you keep it near the entrance of your home as well as soon as you buy your fruits and veggies put it in the hot water and then allow it to sit for at least 10 to 15 minutes then you take it inside your kitchen wash it thoroughly and then also baking soda is more than enough uh, proven to kill and also any temperature above 60 to 65 degree can kill most of the virus because these virus will be inactive uh, it will be active only for half an hour if it is on a foot or in any contaminant so in that case we'll allow it to uh, be in the hot water for 20 minutes to 30 minutes and then baking soda is more than enough to clean it so that you don't lose your nutrients as well right okay uh, yeah so if you don't have baking soda what you can do is rock salt and your cooking soda should be pretty good enough and let it be hot water and also make sure you clean it twice in a good hot water Great, great. Okay. Uh, well, also, uh, due to lack of availability of vegetables, people are suggesting to boil um, and freeze the vegetables so they pre they preserved and used for longer. Uh, what is the loss of nutrients when this is done, um, or is it even advisable? Uh, so there are vegetables uh, which you can freeze and not uh, many uh, like your green peas or your spinach, your uh, carrots can be freezed and your nutrient loss will not happen. So what happens is uh, this is it's about the right method of freezing. So any f uh, vegetable which is a vitamin B base that is your uh, vitamin soluble um, water soluble vitamins like your b and c so you're not supposed to be freezing it in a water brine so you're just going to refrigerate it but whereas something like in spinach or green peas you can immediately wash it and freeze it in a ziploc cover just make sure there's no moisture you're supposed to pad dry it and then freeze it as soon as you bring it outside you're supposed to cook it immediately in that way your nutrient loss is very minimal 
Okay. Uh, well, the next question is for people who, um, you know, who also have the practice of consuming the animal uh, protein. So um, what is your advice for people? People are very skeptical, very, um, you know, uh, worried um, even to even, uh, even to consume. People who eat on a regular basis are also very skeptical uh, whether to consume, how safe is it, all that. Mm. What is your advice? Uh yeah, as of now, WHO has clearly given the guidelines that India is not affected, like any of the animals is not affected and no case has been recognized till now uh, who have got infected because of an animal protein. So you can still go ahead and have animal protein. It's only about the availability. And uh, so the same procedure, You, it's better not to freeze freeze it wash it thoroughly do not leave any blood stains in the meat so wash it nicely with a good hot water and some turmeric base that is our traditional way of washing the animal protein and even eggs are safe there was only one small um, uh, you know there was some whatsapp thing that there's a bird flu which is happening around but nothing is confirmed so you can still go ahead if you are comfortable having Okay, uh, well, the next question is about what is your take on um, bread versus sordo bread? Okay, um, a white bread is a big no, I would say, but a brown bread is pretty good. So, sordo is something where in it again depends whether your base is maida or whether the base is a whole wheat flour. If it's a whole wheat flour, sordo definitely is one of the very healthy choice because that has the bacteria which is still alive in the bread and that improves our gut health. Whereas if you go for a normal bread, it's better to have a toasted brown bread that has better impact on your insulin uh, sensitivity. It means the body will take time to digest that uh, toasted brown bread and um, the sugar releases pretty slower. So both has its own pros and cons, but you will have to make sure that the sodo is also whole wheat base and not maida base. Okay. Uh, well, this is the next question. Upcoming question is about um, the fitness routine. How do you stick to an exercise routine in times like this uh, when the motivation is lacking? Um, Aditi, you want to take over? Yeah, sure. So. Uh... I find that a lot of people do lack a sense of motivation right now, but uh, it's more about uh, understanding that what, what this sort of exercise routine will bring to you. It is not something that, you know, overnight you're aiming for that beach body that you're going to get, but it's more about, okay, it's, it's, it's about creating a healthier habit for yourself and it's about a lifestyle. There are a lot of times when I have not exercised in the day and there are a lot of, I'm sure like everyone, uh, everyone has that moment when oh, you know where they're a little bit lazy and they don't feel like exercising and it's fine but uh, sometimes when you realize that the end goal is not about uh, a certain aesthetic look or a certain uh, sort of uh, sculpted figure that you're looking for rather it is about you living your most active and your most healthy life to live disease free and right now to live disease free is probably the biggest aim for most people uh, and if that is an end goal for you, then exercise definitely has to be a part of your routine. And it's okay if you don't want to sort of stick to a routine where you're exercising daily. But try to exercise at least thrice or four times a week because at least it keeps your body moving and keeps you active. And one suggestion would be to start off slow. Don't overwhelm yourself where, you're, where the only thing that you're trying on a daily basis is push-ups and pull-ups and extreme sprints and stuff like that. Rather, start slow. Why don't you maybe, uh, I mean, I can link a few uh, sort of uh, beginner videos that are available on YouTube, which you can put up on your TV, or put up on your computer screen and try to replicate. And these are just some videos that will just start you off to a better exercise journey. And uh, even if you probably look at our Telegram community, what we're doing is just giving really, really exercises, really, really easy exercises for people to follow. So like... We, we, we put out like one exercise every day and expect people to follow that one exercise. It's a really, really simple exercise which you can do, um, which even beginners can do and like first timers can do. And that is just some 
thing to sort of inculcate the habit. And once you've got the habit formation on point, you'll eventually start to do it naturally and you don't have to force yourself to exercise. And it's the same thing with me as well. Uh, it, it's become a force of habit now that I exercise rather than, you know, forcing myself saying, uh, oh no, I have to exercise, I have to get up and, you know, uh, do it. So it, it's become a habit now and I quite enjoy it. So I, I would just suggest start slow and uh, start easy and level up every single time. Sure. Uh, we have one other question uh, here. I think this is for uh, Deepika. Deepika, the question is, uh, uh, is there a concern over consuming fermented food in the night? Uh, it, I think somebody is referring to something like a dosa batter or idli batter. Okay. Uh, so until and unless you have an IBS, so for few of them, uh, mild symptoms uh, would trigger off. Like if you have mildly or affected by IBS, definitely fermented food can trigger a lot of uncomfortable feeling, bloating and gastric issues. If you feel you're comfortable, I mean, if you feel, no, I don't have IBS and I can have, then definitely uh, fermented foods can be taken at any given point of time in the day or night. Great. Uh, well, uh, this is, I think, uh, I've stopped receiving more questions here. Um, like, uh, we've already had quite a few questions. Do we, do we still have questions coming up? Well, I think we can wrap it up then. Um, uh, thank you so much, Deepika. Thanks, Aditya. It was a great session. It was a lot of insight. Um, you know and it, it actually is very important at it at this point because a lot of people had a lot of issues and a lot of uh, you know doubts what is right what is wrong uh, thanks for clarifying all of it um it was it was great once again thank you so much thank you so much Meghna. thank you for the opportunity and uh, it was great speaking to you thank you thank you thanks everyone for joining this call Hope you all thank you guys bye-bye bye-bye I'd like to request the participants, uh, if you'd like more updates on the regular webinars that Clayworks is having, please leave your email addresses in the chat box so we can constantly keep you updated about uh, the webinars that we're having every week. Thank you.